the U.S. Navy Next Generation Destroyer is coming. The U.S. Navy has officially started developing a new guided missile destroyer class. The tentatively titled DDGX will replace the older Ticonderoga class guided missile cruisers and early Arleigh Burke class guided missile destroyers. The ships will be the backbone of the Navy's fleet into the mid-21st century, protecting carriers and high-end ships while also providing offensive firepower of their own. The Navy kicked off the DDGX by establishing a new program office to oversee development, Defense News reports. The office will manage DDGX's design, technical data package development, construction, testing, fleet introduction and sustainment plans, with an eye toward ordering the first ship in 2028. If everything stays on track, the first ship should enter the Navy service around 2032. The Navy operates 22 Cold Era Ticonderoga class guided missile cruisers and 69 RLA Burke class destroyers. The Navy produced the Ticonderoga between 1980 and 1991 and expected to have replaced them by now, but a lack of funding over the last 20 years, when land was dominated, has stemmed the development of a replacement. The Arleigh Burke class, meanwhile, has basically been in continuous production since 1998, upgraded with new technology and a helicopter hangar. The Navy views the Ticonderogas as bodyguards for high-value warships. The service built the Ticonderogas with SPY-1A air defense radars, the Aegis combat system, and 122 missile silos to repel mass missile attacks targeting aircraft carriers and their battle groups. The RLA Burke destroyers have a similar loadout, but with the newer SPY-1D radars and 90-96 missile silos. The Burke destroyers can pinch hit fleet defenders if necessary, and also hunt submarines and conduct attacks against land targets with cruise missiles. The Navy canceled a CGX cruiser replacement program in 2010 because costs grew far beyond what the Navy could afford. The service then embraced a future surface combatant family of system approach, which would include a large and small manned combatant and large and medium unarmed combatant, all of which are in testing or in production today, except for the large man combatant. The start date for the large surface combatant acquisition was pushed to 2023 to 2025, then to 2028, as the Navy struggles to define what the ship will be. Among the challenges for the Navy has been identifying what capability it needs for large combatant and how much it's willing to pay, especially as the service has been increasingly clear that future operations will rely more heavily on small and unarmed combatants dispersed throughout the battle space. In this approach, fewer large combatants will conduct only those missions which the smaller ships cannot do. Chief among those missions is to haul around a large radar and large missiles. DDGX will likely start with the SPY-6 AMDR and the Aegis Baseline 10 combat system, with room to grow as more powerful radars are developed down the line. DDGX will also likely be asked to carry hypersonic missiles or other long-range weapons that are too large to fit in today's MK-41 vertical launching system tubes and it will be asked to host direct energy weapons, electromagnetic warfare tools, and more that consume a large amount of power. The Navy expects that its large surface combatant fleet, which today is made up of about 92 cruisers and destroyers, will fall to about 74 in the future, reflecting the Navy's preference to make smaller combatants the workforce of the fleet and save DDGs for where they're most needed.
DDGX has big shoes to fill. The Navy's new thinking appears to cast the ship as the main escort for carrier and amphibious groups, while the new Constellation class guided missile frigates and littoral combat ships take on lesser roles. The new destroyer will emphasize a new hull form, an efficient integrated power system, and greater endurance, according to Defense News. The power system will be essential for integrating the lesser weapons that will probably go on the DDGX. The new destroyer will likely have at least one or two lasers, short-term weapons and adjustable power levels that can blind drones or shoot down incoming missiles. The DDGX will likely have a multi-purpose 5-inch gun and large silos capable of carrying the Navy's new hypersonic missiles. The ships will need standard-size MK-41 silos for air defense missiles, long-range anti-submarine rockets, cruise missiles, and anti-ship missiles. The loss of the Ticonderoga class with their 122 silos means the next generation ship will have at least 100 silos and maybe more. The ship's arrangement will probably include ship-launched lightweight anti-submarine torpedoes, a hangar, and flight deck capable of supporting one or two MH-60 Seahawk helicopters, and facilities for launching and recovering smaller, uncrewed surface and subsurface ships. The facilities could also support uncrewed aerial vehicles. The age of the Ticonderoga class, which should be retiring right now, means the Navy must keep the DDGX program on time and on track. The ship could share many of the same features as the latest version of the RLA Burke class in order to reduce risk.